Assalamu alaikum. You know, I've been called a lot of things in my life. I've been called environmentalist, I've been called environmental activist, I've been called tree hugger, and those were actually the nice things. I've also been teased a lot for my choice and career path. Um, a lot of people, when I was a student, they'd ask me, they'd be like, so what are you going to do after you graduate? Where are you going to work? And the golden question, how are you going to make money? And, you know, I remember a story about this one guy. He always used to tease me when I was in university. He'd be like, Mira, are you going to wear those ugly orange jumpsuits and go out and start cleaning the streets? Now, for those of you who don't know, the laborers who work at the municipality all wear an orange jumpsuit when they go out into the streets to clean the streets. Um, the most ironic part of that story is that is exactly what I do. <laughs> Minus the orange jumpsuit part, of course. Um, I currently work at a partly owned company, um, partly municipality owned company that's uh, in waste management and it's based in Sharjah. Okay. What you are looking at, and this is exactly why we need waste management, by the way. So what you are looking at right now, ladies and gentlemen, is a picture of a turtle that, as a baby, got caught in a plastic ring. And as you all know, plastic is non-biodegradable, which means that it lasts with us forever and ever. So this poor turtle had no choice but to grow around the ring, hence its deformity. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about myself and just give you a background. So I thought at this point, it's quite fitting for me to put up my Twitter handle on this slide. And I know all of you guys love this stuff. So <laughs> actually, Twitter is useful. I do use it as a medium to connect and to engage with other tree huggers. So if any one of you in this room has any questions about the environment or just would like to you know, ask anything or talk about the environment, please feel free to follow me. So I decided to study environmental sciences for my bachelor's. And you know, a, a lot of people used to ask me, and they still ask me. They would ask me, why did you choose environmental sciences? You know, and as cheesy as it sounds, and I was told by our first speaker, Khaled, actually, to add some cheese. Um, as cheesy as it sounds, every time someone asks me that question, my answer would always be, I never chose the environment. The environment chose me. And the reason being is that I'd be lying if I actually told you that I was always passionate about the environment. That's absolutely not true. I was never passionate about it. Growing up, I was never interested in the environment. But I kind of stumbled upon it, and we all, you see, we all believe in a concept, in the concept of nasib. We all believe in nasib, which is destiny. We all believe that we were all placed on this earth to fulfill a certain purpose to deliver a message, to carry out a certain set of responsibilities. And I believe, personally, that I was placed on this earth to be a protector of the environment. I feel it is my responsibility to be the custodian of the environment. And I believe it's my nasib. So I decided to study environmental sciences as I applied for uh, university at AUS, which is the American University of Sharjah. And it look, looked like a very uh, attractive program. It looked very interesting. So I decided to take a leap of faith, and I studied environmental sciences, and I turned out to be pretty damn good at it. After, uh, well, my bachelor's was quite a hard science. So I was studying a lot of chemistry, a lot of physics, a lot of biology, and I was spending endless hours in the lab. And I also managed to squeeze in a minor in psychology while I was at AUS. Now, I only mention my minor in psychology at this point because it actually did really benefit me in the future. After graduation, I decided, you know, I'm not ready to face the real world. I'm not ready to get a job. I would like to continue my education and further my knowledge in the environmental field. So I decided I'd like to take up a master's. I looked around um, in the UAE. I was researching certain institutions that are offering post-grads in environmental sciences, and I couldn't find any. Um, I would just like to say, and I think I am addressing the majority of the people in this room are Emirati youth, I would just like to say, the opportunities around us today are endless. There are so many post-grad degrees available everywhere, 
Alhamdulillah, education is quite accessible in the UAE. So I would really count my blessings if I were you. I, on the other hand, had to travel abroad. I went to London. I enrolled in UCL, which is University College London. And I decided to take up a master's in, that's called Environment, Science, and Society. Now, the role here, the emphasis is on society. And like I said, my psychology back background really helped me in, in my master's program. And as opposed to my bachelor's, my master's was quite a social science. And if you ask me, sitting in a lab for eight hours, dealing with chemical solvents is so much easier than dealing with people. So before I knew it, it was time for me to choose a topic for my, dis for my dissertation, for my master's thesis. And I was always interested in the relationship people have with the natural physical environment. And even if you don't realize it, every single human being has a relationship towards their environment. I was particularly interested, however, to study that relationship amongst Emiratis. As we all know, our forefathers were very much embedded within the environment. They actually depended on it for survival, whether it was fishing or pearl diving or hunting. And so I wanted to know if that was still the case. Are Emirati youth still embedded in the environment? You know, and I wanted to study that relationship. I wanted to contrast. I'm sorry, but this slide just keeps moving on its own. I didn't click on anything. I'm still. OK, I'm not going to touch it. Um, so I wanted to study that, that shift in perception, that the, the older Emirati um, relationship with the environment versus the younger Emirati. Now, it's worth noting at this point that I keep referring to them as older and as younger, as opposed to old and young, because when I was doing my master's, I had two very, very tough supervisors helping me out. And, you know, I'm grateful for them today, but trust me, I wasn't back then. And they would, they actually, they accused me of being ageist. And ageist is like being racist, or it's like being sexist. It's applying a set of stereotypes to people based on their age group. And that's how precise research is. So I had to continue referring to them until this very day as older and younger. So my research entailed that I go out into the UAE and I do interviews with all of these people, with older Emiratis and with younger Emiratis. And I had to go out into areas of the UAE that I had never seen before, although I'm born and raised in Sharjah. So I always say that my master's abroad was pretty much a journey of self-discovery for me. Now, we have three different environments in the UAE. It's either, um, so it's either the coast, which is Sharjah, the um, desert, which is El Daid or Mleha, or mountains. We have a lot of mountains in the UAE, if you don't know, which is in Fijera. Um, now, I'm sorry about the uh, quality of, um, of this map. It's actually from a book that was published in 1980. Um, and, uh, and so those are the three environments that I had to, because I'm sure that each group of people who live in a different environment would relate to the environment in a different way. And if anybody in this room is planning to do research in the future, you have to know one thing. Representativeness is everything. So I had to include the, the three different types of environments within my research. Now, ideally, I would have loved to interview older Emiratis and younger Emiratis from every single emirate, but time was my only limiting factor. I met some very, very passionate individuals on my journey. I interviewed them. Um, I'd li particularly like to note the older Emiratis that I interviewed. Um, they shared with me the most inspiring stories, and I learned a lot from them, and they let me into their homes and into their lives. There is a story I'd like to share with you about an older Emirati lady that I met in Mleha. And believe it or not, this lady, till this very day, sleeps outdoors. She would refuse to sleep indoors, even in the most harshest of climates, even in the middle of August. And in fact, when I went to visit her, her son showed me in an area in the garden, her bedroom, which he built for her, and she would sleep there every night. I found that fascinating. I mean, I've never seen anything like this before. And I don't think that any one of us today would ever spend five minutes outside in the middle of August. So I had all of this interview material that I had to translate 
in some cases, as a lot of the interviews were done in Arabic, transcribe, theme, code, interpret, analyze. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the long and tedious process known as research. So um, from my research uh, and all this information and all this data that I gathered, all of these themes emerged. And they could broadly be split into three categories, which is biophysical, economic, or social. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about every single one of these um, themes. A, I don't have the time. B, I don't want to bore you to death. But I would like to tap into two themes and, and just briefly uh, discuss them. The first one is environmental consumption. And the second one is emotional or cultural attachment to place. Now, who here enjoys going dune bashing? Can I have a show of hands? OK, so maybe I shouldn't have asked that question. Um, through my conversations with younger Emiratis, I'd always ask them, so tell me, do you guys have, do you guys have, do you spend any time outdoors? You know, do you, do you ever go out and, and spend time out in the natural environment? And they go, oh, yeah, 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 of course we do. We go dune bashing. And I was like, I'm sorry, dune bashing? What, what is dune bashing? They were like, yeah, we, we take our quad bikes and we take our four by four vehicles and we drive like crazy up and down these sand dunes. And I was like, you know, okay, fair enough. At least you, you guys spend some time in the environment. You spend some time in the desert outdoors. And here I was thinking, okay, it's not so bad. You know, some, some of our youth actually enjoy doing this stuff. And then I interviewed these older Emiratis and I would ask them about this phenomenon. I would ask them about dune bashing and I'd, all excited, I'd be like, so do you guys go dune bashing? And they're like, we hate it. We forbid it. If anything, we actually ask the government to ban it. It is the most environmentally destructive practice anybody could ever do. And I was shocked for a while. You know, I was like, okay, <laughs> this, is, this is major. Um, it, it is a big shift in perception between one form of environmental consumption and another. Whereas the older generation consumed the environment sustainably, and even before the term sustainable development came into our lives, they would, they would, they would, you know, they would practice sustainable harvesting, whether it was in agriculture or fishing or pearl diving. They would only use as much as they needed, and they were very, very respectful of the environment. And when I asked them about the concept of dune bashing, they said, in all of the desert, we tread softly on earth. We use our feet or we use on the camels. We would never do this. This is complete disrespect towards the environment. And then you have the younger generation who consume the environment recreationally. I mean, aside from the adrenaline rush, this practice has no benefit to humanity in any way, shape, or form. So, the second theme that I'd like to touch upon is the cultural and or emotional attachment to place or environment. Now, as Emiratis, we are very, very patriotic. We, and, and, and that, that patriotism actually translates directly into an attachment to our country, to our place, to our environment. And so we are all, in one way or another, attached to this environment. Um, and, you know, I, I interviewed all of these older Emiratis and the words they were using and the stories they were sharing with me were just so beautiful. I couldn't, I couldn't change their words. I, there was no way for me to rephrase it. So I would literally plug their quotes in as is into my research. And there is this one quote that I would like to share with you. If I could just read it out. It says, in the past, there was a penalty for those who cut down a tree or part of it for no reason. A tree is part of the environment, so if you harm a tree, therefore you have harmed the entire environment, the people's environment, God's environment. You know what that penalty was? They would shave off a man's beard. I don't think we have such harsh penalties anymore. If anything, if you were caught littering, you would be asked to pay a fine. And in fact, this law used to exist in the past and then was revoked for a long time. And while I was doing research for my TEDx talk, actually, I was recently informed that this law is back in place. So that's a good thing. 
But it's not a penalty like this. You see, the older generation felt that they were, that the environment was within them. And us, as a younger generation, we feel like we are part of the environment. We, along the years and with the generations, have sort of separated ourselves from the environment. We, we view it as a separate entity, like business, like politics. The environment is just another entity. Whereas the older Emiratis, they felt the environment was something that was within them. It's an intrinsic discourse. It's very much like culture, like heritage, like religion. And so if somebody commits a crime against the environment, and yes, they consider it a crime, it was such a dishonorable act. It was like you're insulting somebody's culture or religion, and it deserved a dishonorable penalty. And back in the day, there was nothing more dishonorable than shaving a man's beard. As with everything in life, there's always good news and there's always bad news. I don't know about you guys, but I always prefer hearing the bad news first. So here we go. The bad news is fairly obvious. Emirati youth as a generation are environmentally indifferent. We've become divorced from the environment. We spend little or no time outdoors. We're very work oriented. We spend more time in the office, at home or in a mall, or nowadays in the car. And the environment just doesn't make it to the list of our priorities. It's just not a priority to us. There is some good news, however. And the good news is that Emirati youth are aware. We're all aware of the current issues we face. And like I said, alhamdulillah, education is very accessible. Emirati youth are willing. We are all willing to make a difference. We are all willing, everybody in this room is willing to be the change. And in fact, this was illustrated when our beloved UAE turned 40 this year. The very next day, the youth took to the streets to arrange cleanups and to clean up the mess that was made the day before. So, if <laughs> so if this goes to show you anything, it's that Emirati youth are willing and they're able. They have called upon education and they have called upon government support to help mobilize them to achieve these changes. Emirati youth are the future. You are the future. You are all responsible to protect the environment. The very essence of this event is if, if not us, then who? You know, I could stand here and preach to you about recycling. I can convince you to take shorter showers. I can go on and on about all the principles of energy conservation and water conservation. But, and those are all very good things, don't get me wrong. But that's not what I'm planning to tell you. All I ask is that you think, is that you feel, is that you respect. All I ask is that you be true Emiratis and that you change your environmentality. Thank you. Thank you.